A lot of people in the community love film emulations on their photos, myself included, as you can see in these photos. It is a better alternative to actual film photography if you're on a tight budget. So today I'm going to be sharing my thought process on how I edit my Digicam photos to make them look like film photos in Lightroom. Hey yo, what's up everybody? My name is Patrick. I'm an architecture gadget. I make videos about architecture, quirky tech, and unnecessary knowledge. Or if you're into that, make sure to subscribe for more content like this. <laughs> so before we start, let's categorize it into three parts. First is when do I use my Digicam. Second is photo culling and the thought process on editing. And third is exporting and uploading. Let's get started. So to preface this, I only use my Digicam on night outs or parties with my friends. There are times that I would bust these out during the day, but 9 out of 10 times, I would prefer using them at night. So by the way, if you want to watch my video on why Digicams are better than disposable film cameras, you may click here or the link in the description. First is take a lot of photos during the night out. For example, we went to a Halloween party here in Legaspi. Went and dressed up as myself. So here are the photos during the night out. So next, we are going to be culling the whole gallery. So what is photo culling? So photo culling is basically choosing the best photos out of the whole gallery. I call my photos using Photo Mechanic. It's very user friendly and it's the first app that I've used to call photos. Not sponsored, but I wish it was. So once I've called the whole gallery, I'm going to be making a new folder called the Called Catalog. I'm just going to be dragging the called photos there so that it's easier for me to import it onto Lightroom. So now let's go to Lightroom. <laughs> So now I've imported all the photos, now let's begin editing. Let's start with this photo. This is a photo of uh, Janina and Jazzy. This is taken right before we were going uh, to the party actually. So I took a couple of photos on the street. So I'm going to be doing the basic edits first. I'm going to be adding a bit of um, exposure. I want their faces to be, to be seen on the photo. I'm going to be adding a bit of contrast as well. Now we're going to be talking about highlights. So almost every old Digicam out there uses the sensor CCD, which basically means your Digicam will take photos like a film camera, where all of the highlights or the bright lights on the photo has the bloomy effect. It's pretty much like using a Promis filter. I'm going to be adding a bit, just a bit. I'm happy with plus 20. Now we proceed to the green tint on the photos. The green tint on shadows is pretty much like a hit or miss for people. Uh, but um, I actually want that effect on my photos because it makes it look like it's actually film photos. So we're going to go on to the tone curve here. I'm going to be adding like five. I'm happy with five. Now we proceed on to the blacks and the shadows. You rarely see the contrasty blacks on disposable film photos. Either you see the greenish tint or the grayish tint. I'm going to be dropping the shadows a bit, minus 25, and dropping the blacks as well. As you can see, it's very focused on the subject now. You can still see Janina's um, outfit. It doesn't blend with the backdrop, so I'm happy with that. Now let's move on to colors. So I'm going to be adding a bit of vibrance. And you may be wondering why vibrance, not saturation. So let me explain. So the difference between saturation and vibrance is saturation intensifies or increases the amount of color in your photos whereas in vibrance it's pretty much the same but it's more focused on the mid-tones. I'm going to be adding plus 15. I'm actually happy with the initial look. So next is every photographer's favorite panel here on Lightroom, the effects panel. <laughs> Let's start with grain, shall we? Because as you can see here, there's little to no grain on the, the backdrop here. I just want to add like a bit of it. I'm happy. Wait, let me go. Let me go to plus 30. I'm happy with 30. And the, the size. Let's go for 35. And there you go. I'm actually happy with that. But if ever there's a lot of uh, grain already on the photo, I'm not going to be touching the grain. But 9 out of 10 times, I'm adding grain. <laughs> And lastly, we're going on to a vignette. I'm going to be adding a bit of vignette to imitate the short-range flash that disposable film cameras has. So it hits the subject first and then the backdrop. I'm going to be adding a bit. so that, And as well, it focuses more on the subject. As you can see, I'm happy with the photo. I'm going to be editing every photo now. Let me save it. Let me save the preset first. So for some photos, I'm going to be adding more of the grayish tint because 
as you can see here the blacks is very black I'm going to be going on to the grayish tint I'm adding a bit of it there you go there are some photos I'm going to be adjusting the exposure as well so as you can see here this is my friend Poch she is very white so I'm going to be dropping the exposure <laughs> yeah this is the advantage of editing um, Digicam to make it look like film photos is because you can imitate each photo and it has like their own uh, different style or look rather. So once I'm done and happy with my edits, now we go on to exporting. I export my photos using 100 quality and 300 resolution. You may also do 70 quality and 240 resolution to make your file sizes smaller. So once I'm done exporting, I go to my Telegram channel. This is where I upload all my photos so that I can access it on my phone. And there you go. That is pretty much all the stages of how I edit the photos, how I export, and how I upload it onto Instagram or any social media, honestly. <laughs> So thank you everybody for watching. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Um, make sure to subscribe as well. And I'll see you all soon. Bye. <laughs>